Hi, my name is Harry Crawley and I'm a professor at Texas A&M University in the Department of Soil and Crop Sciences. The course I'm going to focus on, I teach several classes, is Agronomy 3.0, which is really ethics in agriculture. Now, um, it is very much agriculture ethics with the human face. First, we begin with the discussion of possible ethical theories. The first theory we go over is what I call biological determinism. And that is that what we do in terms of what is right and wrong, which is what ethics is about, is governed by our genes. And somehow, through the evolution of cosmic, galactic, planetary, and biological forces, we have reached a stage of development where we believe certain things are right or wrong. The second theory I go over is um, one that's uh, more common and very important politically in the concept of multiculturalism, and that is, and that is cultural relativity. In the theory of cultural relativity, uh, all our understandings of what is right and wrong really come from our culture. And so instead of being automatons of our genes, we're actually automatons of our culture. The third theory I go over is uh, more personal, and that is based upon individual decision making. In that theory, the thought is, is that what we believe in right and wrong is what we basically choose. And so one person chooses one thing and one person chooses another. Uh, in the end, of course, what we have from those three theories is best expressed by the song that uh, Cole Porter wrote in 1930s about the 1920s, which is Anything Goes. The final theory I present is a theory that actually there is some, there's actually a transcendent good and evil. There's something inherently good and some things are inherently good. And this is really based upon, most people believe would be based upon God, although there are a few people who advocate this and don't believe in God. Now we look at different philosophers and different things. After we go through the theories, the first thing we do is we take a case study. And the case study we look at is a case study of slavery. And in slavery, we look at both the slaves and the slave owners. For example, Frederick Douglass represents the slaves. Isaac Johnson represents the slaves. Of course, Abraham Lincoln uh, represents the North, and then we have uh, Southerners represented by Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, and the people who made the Texas Ordinance of Secession. We try to test out all of these theories. Basically, we look at biology, culture, individuals, and God. After doing that, we hopefully will come to some conclusions, although we don't have to agree on any conclusions in this class. But then we proceed on and look at the, look at the shadow cast by slavery. Slavery cast quite a shadow. I don't know if you can see this here, some shadow here but they've got the lighting so it's kind of hard to have shadows. But the shadow cast by slavery, we look at that, and that shadow, of course, occurs all the way up through today. We look at the Civil Rights Movement, beginning with the Double B Movement, created by the black newspaper, the Pittsburgh Courier. Then we look at the more modern Civil Rights Movement under, under uh, the leadership of Dr. Martin Luther King. Finally, we finish up looking at, at Bill Cosby's contemporary views of civil rights in there. We go back to the agricultural scene, and then we look at what happened after slavery. And after slavery, what happens? we have sharecroppers and migrant workers. And we look at sharecroppers. We look at two very famous sharecroppers, Dory Miller, who was the first black American who won the Navy Cross in World War II, and the most highly decorated American soldier of all time, who also served in World War II, Audie Murphy. We look at sharecropping and migrant labor. That leads us eventually to mechanization and immigration. In mechanization, we look upon the relationship between sharecroppers, migrant labor, and mechanization mainly in the South, but also in Texas as well. We then look at the contemporary issue of immigration across the border. And that, of course, is highly controversial. We present many points of view. Some people believe, really, that it's simply a reconquest of what Mexico used to have and, and, and lost to the United States and now recovering. Other people believe it's a threat to our culture. We look at all the sides of this, as well as innumerable statistics. Finally, we do find out one thing for sure, and that is the population of Texas is increasing greatly expected to approximately double between the year 2000 and 2040. And so we conclude looking at that population growth relative to water. Water is a major issue in the state. There's all kinds of concerns, both agriculture and, um, and, and urban areas. We look at the water wars often caused, called between agriculture and uh, urban use, between the needs of present generation, needs of future generations, the needs for industry, and the needs for wildlife. And we conclude on that topic. As far as taking the course is concerned, I, I ask you to consider just two things. Well, first of all, let me, let me say this. A professor never takes his or her course, and no professor takes his or her or anybody else's course. And therefore, your best guide is always uh, to ask students who've taken the class before. Secondly, I do caution you that uh, there's a strict attendance policy. Everything in this class is done as teamwork. We have team projects daily. We also have final ex all, all exams are teams. There's nothing individual unless you miss a class and have an excuse absence. Since everything's done as team, I rely very highly on we are the Aggies, the Aggies are we, true to each other's Aggies can be. In fact, 
Um, I always say we are the Aggies, the Aggies that we treat each other as Aggies can be or will be something I can't say on this broadcast, but any student that I know will be able to tell you what the other thing is. Thank you for listening to me and I hope to see you in the class.